Welcome to another episode of Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood, like self-identity, relationships, money, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is for it to bring comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. And honestly, like today's episode, it is inspired by my personal core problem. And this was something that I kind of only identified that I'm struggling with. Late last year, when I went for therapies for some other issues, like I went there to deal with some personal anger management (laughs) stuff. Um, But we realized that a lot of the things that I do or how I approach things are hugely motivated by my this big fear of failure. And specifically, as I share about it today, I kind of want to approach this topic from an angle of a high achiever because that was who I was. So it is quite a personal content and I honestly don't know if everybody will be able to resonate with what I'm sharing, but I thought it would be great for me to kind of just share with you what I've learned through some of my reflections on how I've been navigating my mindset on how to manage this fear of failure that I've been having pretty much my entire life. Hopefully, by sharing my own story, my own experiences, there will be some gems around this episode that you might find helpful as well. Let's first talk about the journey from going to being a student to an adult like your goal as a student was to get good grades and honestly to achieve that if you are able to follow this formula that our previous generation has figured out for us then you're set like as long as you are able to complete the past year papers you study what the teachers have told you to study if you complete your assignments based on your teacher's criteria and if you get involved in extracurricular to show people that you have leadership quality like if you can be good at all of that then you pretty much would achieve success as a student and be called a top student or whatever it is But once you hit that milestone and now that you are leveling up to becoming an adult, your definition of success and your goal would be highly dependent on yourself then because this is when, you know, the definition or the goal is really different for everybody. For a lot of us, when we just got into adulthood, when we don't know what it is that we like or we want, we would just follow the most common blueprint of success. And that is career success. And maybe like success as a woman might also mean that you are able to start a family and take care of a family and raise child. Like these were the traditional definitions of success. But the truth is it can be very different for everybody. And for some people like myself, My definition of success is truly if I can live a very full and fulfilling life and it's not that much about money. But of course, there is a certain level of wealth that I would like to have in order for me to be able to accomplish this vision that I have. But success for you can also look like achieving some sort of social status because you want to gain that respect from people that used to not respect you. Or success can also mean owning certain luxury goods that you would feel like, okay, when I get this, that is when I know that I've succeeded. So success looks really, really different for everybody. And honestly, there is no right or wrong answer in terms of what is your definition of success. But the thing is this, because our definition is also different The formula to achieve success for all of us, it's also very different. So there may not be a lot of people that can understand you when it comes to talking about your journey, when it comes to accomplishing these goals. And 
I honestly think that your 20s is meant to be for self-discovery. Whether it is in your personal or your professional journey, this is the time for you to ask questions, try things, and figure out if there are things that you like that you don't like and what it is that you want. And I find that as you approach your late 20s or your early 30s, that is when you kind of have an idea about where exactly you want to go. Um, but I think this is also where the problem kind of comes in for a lot of my high achiever friend and also myself. And that is because we are so used to being celebrated and praised by others for being so smart or so clever or so good at whatever we do. The stakes are a lot higher when it comes to, I don't know, like accomplishing a certain level of success because since everyone has some sort of expectations, like even though no one has explicitly told it to my face that, oh my God, because you are a top student, we expect you to be so good in your career and whatnot. But I can imagine, or in fact, I know already for a fact that like when my aunties talk to my mom, for example, they would say things like, oh yeah, she got first place in school. Her result was so good. She was a scholarship student, you don't need to worry about her one. She's so clever. She'll be fine. She'll do great in her career. But what if we don't, right? Like just because we were good in school, that doesn't mean that we will automatically be good in managing our personal finances or be naturally good at being a boss or starting a business and running a business or dealing with people and stuff like that, that coming into adulthood and building a career for yourself is so much more complicated than what we were taught in school. Like, there were so many things about adulting that we weren't taught. But because that we think that there is this expectations, we are afraid to disappoint. And so, in the fear that we may fail, we play safe by not taking risk. We are good in following rules, so if you can play by the corporate rule well, you'll probably be quite settled. But what if your goal is so much more than what you are settling for today? What if your definition of success is so much more than just having a good career and buying a house and getting married and starting a family? Like, what if you want something that is different from what is expected from you? Do you fight for what you want? Or do you cave in because of your fear of failure and your fear of disappointing the people that you love? Because if you want to be a New York Times bestseller author or the next James Cameron or the next Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk, you definitely will not be able to achieve it if you just play by the rule. In fact, it's the opposite. You have to be really good in breaking rules to do things differently, to be able to take risk in order to come up with the next big thing. And my realization for this happened back in 2017, which is a year after I graduated from university, when I came across this article about why class valedictorians don't become millionaires. And for those of you who are not familiar with North American like education terms, valedictorian is a student who has the highest grades in their graduating class and they are usually the, the one that is making a speech at the graduation ceremony. And so there was this study where they followed up with the career and the professional life of 81 of valedictorians across the US. And nearly 90% of them now are in professional careers with 40% of them being in the highest tier jobs. They are reliable, consistent, and well-adjusted. 
And by all measures, the majority have pretty good lives, but none, but zero of them actually went on to change the world, to run the world or to impress the world. I'm going to share the link of this article in the show notes in case you want to read more about the study and all that. But can you believe it that none of all these 81 people who graduated as the top of their class actually went on to create something that is groundbreaking, that is big enough to change the world. And they were the number ones in our schools. So when I read this article, that was when I had a huge wake-up call because I don't see myself settling for just being someone who climbs up the corporate ladder and be good at it. I see myself for something that's so much more than that. And so I'm very glad that I had the wake up call at that time to figure out that, okay, I don't want to fit into that mold. Yes, I'm not really a valedictorian, but I was pretty much close to that. Like I was a scholarship student and all that stuff, right? So I felt like I would have fallen into the same category. So I need to be good at, you know, not following rules, but be good in breaking rules as well. And one thing that I've kind of needed to learn to let go of all this past accomplishment is to really remove my ego by having a heart reset. Like if you truly want to move forward in your life, you have to stop thinking that you are a somebody. Yes, I know that you were smart back then and you did better than all of your peers. But I'm very sad to tell you that that doesn't mean much in the adult world anymore. Because now you are competing with so many more people that are outside of your school or your district or your country. And there are people with better strength or maybe just a better um, background, like they just come from a richer family. So things are very different now. So might as well just treat your time coming into adulthood as a heart reset for your brain, for like your computer up here. Back then, your identity is a top performing student. And now that you graduated, that is your past and you are ready to move on as a blank slate. Just reset the system up over here in your brain. My niece recently also shared this concept of adult age with me and I think that it's actually quite interesting. So if you think about it, most of us in our countries, we become legally as an adult at 18 years old. So think of it as that is when you are born. Like when you turn 18, you are a newborn baby in the adult world. And as you approach your 20s, that is when you become a toddler and you start to learn and navigate your surrounding as an adult. And as I approach 31 years old right now, this is when I'm only 13 years old in adult age and I'm just still beginning and there's still so much more that I'm learning and I'm bound to make mistakes as a teenager. When you stop thinking that you are somebody and come as a blank slate, there is not so much to lose anymore if you fail. And don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you to disregard all of your previous accomplishments when you are younger. What I'm saying is to celebrate, to let all the joy and the sense of accomplishments really sink in and then keep it on the side. Because you really don't need to be carrying your medal around to tell people that you are a good athlete. You already know that you are good. You are secure. You don't need to let this past labels define who you are. And if you really think about it, what does it even take to be considered a failure? Because Every single time that you fail or you fall or you make a mistake, like every single time you have these experiences, you are going to learn something out of it and you are able to move on with the knowledge that you now have so that you are able to change the ways you do things or to improve certain processes 
or to maybe take a different path because you learn that that is not from you. So you don't truly fail unless you stop trying to do things differently. You only fail when you truly give up. So the goal is never to not fail at all. The goal has always been to avoid failure as much as possible, like avoid mistakes. But if you have to fail, just fail sooner so that you can learn from it and move on from it quicker. So if anything, you should get comfortable with failures. You should get used to the fact that you may fail and it is just a part of the process. You should not be afraid of it. And if anything, you should be excited to celebrate every failure because every time you fail, every time you make a mistake, that means that you are one step closer to your success. I know, I know, it sounds so cliche, like I'm a, I'm a motivational coach and it sounds so simple, but we also know that it is easier said than done because for our entire lives, we've been thinking of this fear of failure and disappointing others and it does require a lot of like conscious effort to be switching the way that we think things if we really want to change the outcome as well and honestly for me personally this journey of overcoming fear of failure has been filled with a lot of letting go letting go of your past letting go of your ego letting go of your fear of disappointing those that you love. Overcoming your fear of failure comes with a lot of self-acceptance. Acceptance Acceptance of who you are and where you are in your life right now. I hope that you found some comfort in my sharing today and I'll see you in my next episode. Goodbye!